First tonight, people throughout Utah are still talking about that space visitor that lit up the sky early this morning. You see uh, a meteor of this size or this uh, sort of majesty only once every maybe five years or so. Today we've been learning about the science of that rock, that meteor that briefly turned night into day over the western United States. Alex Cabrero is in Salt Lake City. Alex, you spoke with professors at the University of Utah's astronomy department. What are they saying about this meteor? Well, Dini, they're all saying they wish they had seen it with their own eyes, but we do have several video clips of the meteor if you haven't seen it. Of course, the one question everybody has, did it land on the ground? We spoke with several experts who say there's a pretty good chance that it did. In fact, one expert gave us an idea of where it might be, and here's a hint, Utah. 911, what is the address to your emergency? Calls came from everywhere. Ogden. Uh, I'm currently driving, but I just saw a giant blue flash in the sky, and it came down into the city. Bountiful. It flashed from the west and lit up the whole freaking neighborhood. Salt Lake City. Ma'am, I am not kidding you. I am terrified. I mean, Professor David... It's, a, it's an amazing, you know, astronomical phenomenon. Ida is the chair of the University of Utah's astronomy department. He says the energy of the meteor coming into Earth's atmosphere was so powerful, it had um, to be measured in terawatts. It's almost like the consumption of the United States all at once. But it was, only a, it was a fraction of a second. Those who saw it believe it. It looked like a big fireball. It was like daylight. Uh, I've never seen it before. Kita says a meteor like that comes along once every five years. A camera at the University of Utah's Frisco Peak Observatory near Milford caught it, then got the aftershock rumble a few seconds later. Seismology monitors at the U picked up the rumble from the air. It's breaking the sound barrier, and so it is creating sonic booms, you know, shock waves. Seth Jarvis, Clark Planetarium's director, says the meteor was about the size of a washing machine, then vaporized, breaking apart on impact. However, he says there's a good chance some of it landed. And because of all the cameras which recorded it, you can get a good idea of where it may have landed, if it landed. You can time the length of the shadow, the direction of the shadow, the duration of it, and using trigonometry, calculate where in the sky, relative to that camera, that source of light was. Which leads to... It's possible that it's somewhere out in, like, West Desert, somewhere around there. But trust me, I mean, you, you go out there and you wander around. There's rocks on the ground all the time. Now, there is a lot of interest in finding that rock if it did land already. I've received emails from meteorite hunters in Kansas and Nebraska and in Florida asking me if I knew the coordinates or even the azimuth readings of the meteor's trajectory. There is a lot of money there, those meteorites. If you find them, they are worth some money, and it seems like the race to find it, if it's there, it's already on. Bruce Help you're up on your trigonometry, Alex. <laughs> no clue. Thanks. <laughs> uh, right about 12.07 this morning, a meteor. I mean, this big honking meteor slammed into Earth's atmosphere. And unlike the little teeny meteors that usually make the little psss across the sky, I mean, this thing lit up the sky. Uh, literally. I mean, it just, it was like daylight. And it only lasted a couple of seconds, but that was just enough to throw a scare into a whole lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, whoa! But it's a strictly natural thing, uh, so nobody got hurt. It was just a lot of fun to watch this thing. And to, to realize that it was up so high, you know, people are thinking, oh, it's right close. But the thing was up so high that it was seen between Los Angeles, uh, Las Vegas, of course, all over Utah. I mean, this thing was way up there. And uh, about five minutes later, and it took that long for the sound to get to you, but then you hear this, you know. And some people even reported their houses shaking. Uh, all I heard was a little rumble. I didn't feel the house shake. But uh, still, the, most meteors, you don't hear them. But uh, this one was close enough and big enough that, yeah, definitely heard the thing. So it was exciting. Uh, we call a meteor that breaks up like that one did. I mean, it got really bright and then broke into a bunch of pieces. That's officially known as a bolide. But uh, when you've got this mass coming through the atmosphere, and these things are going fast. I mean, it's like if you could travel that fast on I-15, you could get from Salt Lake to St. George in a matter of four or five seconds. Right, you know, so these are just really going. Hits the atmosphere and it makes so much pressure on its leading edge that, I mean, literally it just shatters itself as it's coming through the air. And so then, rather than just seeing the one big meteor, uh, people saw a bunch of little meteors. Uh, of course, that last part only lasted a few seconds because once it does break apart, the aerodynamic forces slow it down, 
cool it down and then it became dark. So it, a matter of fact, if anybody was standing when a thing hit the ground, reach over and pick it up and it would be cool to the touch. Okay. So it's only this flaming thing for a few seconds. The rest of the time it's nice and cool. And so I know the direction of where it blew up and the fact that it took five minutes for the sound to get here, I can calculate about how far away it was. And it appears to be over some more of our Dugway Proving Grounds, the, uh, the test and training range. And I, I don't think many people are allowed to go wandering around. You probably wouldn't want to with all of the old uh, munitions yes. that are out there. But the chances are that there are little rocks not big ones by any means, certainly not big smoking craters in the ground or whatever, but uh, somewhere out there in the Utah desert, there are there are now uh, new pieces that, uh, you know, until a few hours ago was wandering around in outer space. But how high in the sky it was, I can only say that it had to be what quite high because of the fact it was seen over most of Utah and even down into, like I say, Arizona. We've heard uh, certainly from Las Vegas and even I heard one report that I haven't had confirmed from Los Angeles. So, you know, it had to be up quite high to be able to be seen by, you know, that many people from that far around. It's just, oh, it was, oh, it's incredible. <laughs> it's rare, basically, you know, to be standing here and see it from here. But Department of Defense satellites pick these things up, you know, quite routinely. It's just that because the Earth is mostly covered with water, and a lot of the land that these things might happen over is, you know, not many people there. So it's not that often that people get to see them, but they do happen with some frequency. Uh, it's just that last night we just happened to lock out and it was our turn to see it from here. And in 2001, there was supposedly going to be this huge outpouring of Leonid's meteors. And it turns out there were. We saw about 1,500 in one, one night. But we went down to St. George to see it, and on the way back, Early in the morning, uh, again, of, uh, in, in November, one of these very things happened. And uh, I remember ride, driving up I-15 and suddenly the ground all around me turned green uh, because these things burn very green. And I kind of look around and sure enough, and this thing was coming up the freeway at me. And I was like, whoa! You know, of course, it was a long ways away. But it, uh, uh, so again, these things are seen from time to time, but uh, we just lucked out here in Utah. Well, in the Western US, I guess, to be able to see this thing. And I do hope that somebody does find it. You know, find some pieces from it, but I will be very, very surprised. Pleasantly, but very, very surprised. Thank you.